Hello. Today I'm going to talk to you about grammars and parsing. To start off, uh, what is a grammar exactly? Uh, well, a language is can uh, a language can be formally defined as any system of formalized symbols, signs, or so on for communication. And a grammar can be def defined as a set of rules that govern sentences and words and so on in a natural language. So you could think of grammar as a set of rules that tell you whether or not something is part of a language. Now you might be thinking, well, languages and grammars, this sounds like a topic you might discuss in a language class such as English or French or Spanish. Uh, but th this actually has a lot to do with computers as well, because computers also speak their own language. Think about how you might communicate to a computer. Do you com communicate through English? Well, no, you don't. Uh, you might use programming languages such as C or C++ or Java. Now, did you know that computers don't actually understand languages like C++ or Java right away? They have to use compilers uh, to translate the code first into a different language that the computer does recognize. Languages like C++ and Java are considered high-level languages. They are meant for us to be able to understand how they are written more easily and also make it easier such that uh, computers can still translate it. Uh, translating a language, uh, believe it or not, may be a little bit harder than you think. Uh, and uh, this also might lead to how some errors occur uh, in programming uh, due to the programmer not understanding how, how the uh, program code is compiled. A compiler uh, can be uh, uh, separated into five different steps of how it runs. Uh, first, it uh, takes the source code from the programmer, and then it uses a lexical analyzer, uh, which means that it groups the characters in that code into words that ma make sense in the language. So it makes exist existing words using that those characters. And then it checks the syntax to check that the, the words uh, and characters uh, together form syntactically correct sentences. Uh, and then there's the semantic an analyzer that checks wh whether or not the words and their meaning together actually make sense, not just that they sort of form a correct sentence, but that together, together they actually have a meaning that makes sense. And then finally, the, the code is generated and then improved and uh, then made for the machine to act upon. Here's an example of a parse tree. If you uh, take a class and with with a similar uh, subject like this, you'll you'll see these a lot. What I have here is a sentence. It starts with a sentence on the very top, and it goes, as it, and that separates farther down into an actual sentence on the very bottom. So you can see the sentence was uh, separated into three different uh, categories, and those were separated further on. And uh, this shows how a sentence could be derived into what we define a sentence as. Now if you had a se sentence and you wanted to check if it really was a sentence in a language, well, and you made a tree like this, well, how would you derive it? Would you start from the top and then uh, slowly uh, uh, branch off and go to the bottom into the actual word? Or would you start with the words that you have and then try to work your way up uh, from the bottom? Well, either way is fine. Uh, this is called top-down and bottom-up parsing, and we will discuss about both a little bit today. Top-down uh, parsing starts with a start symbol that represents what you know you are trying to translate, and it deconstructs it using a set of uh, given possible rules, uh, using left-side derivation, for, for that language to reach the sentence that you have. Bottom-up starts with the symbols in your sentence and tries to match them with valid representations in the language, and uses right-side derivation to combine those to form other parts of the language, until eventually ending up with the start symbol. Top-down parsing is usually easy for us to do, but bottom-up is u usually it, it works better, especially with computer programming. It's easier for com a computer to use bottom-up uh, parsing uh, better. Either way, you'll, you will get a true or a false uh, statement at the end, whether or not the sentence uh, could be made using the grammar that you've uh, defined. Now here's an example that we, we can start with. I have a grammar here, which means I have two rules. I have 
EXP, which stands for expression, and it could stand for one of three things, either X, EXP plus digit, or EXP times digit, or just digit. And digit can represent either one or zero. So you can see this should uh, allow us to make uh, simple uh, mathematical uh, formulas uh, with addition or multiplication and only with the numbers 1 and 0. And I have two sentences here that I want to check if they are valid. Okay, so if we continue, you uh, if we're using top-down, we want to start with the start symbol, which is exp. And I'm going to see if I can get to the first sentence. So right now I'm just using uh, uh, common sense to try to decide how I'm going to derive this. So I go ahead and uh, change exp to exp plus digit. And then from there I I'm using left side uh, derivation, so uh, mind that you have to look at the symbols on the left side first to see if you could derive them further. And I can derive the ex exp further, so I shall. And I'll, I'll go to exp times digit plus digit. The ex exp at the left can also be derived further, so I will derive that to digit times digit time plus digit. And now the digit can be derived uh, further into a one, so I will. And I will keep, and I can't derive the one any further, so I go to the next symbol, uh, on uh, that's still on the leftmost side that I can derive, which is digit again, which I uh, derive into a zero. And then I finish, and you can see I do get the sentence. Uh, that I uh, was trying to parse. So that is a valid sentence. Now if we do this again for the other sentence, in the same manner, uh, you will notice at the very end that I end up with a sentence that's very close to but not quite what I wanted to get. And I cannot get the sentence uh, in any other way. So we can assume that that second sentence is invalid in this grammar. And do bottom up parsing. Let's see if we can do it the same way. Well, we start with the original uh, uh, sentence, and then we, uh, uh, well, we start uh, taking the leftmost uh, symbol first, and we bring that into focus, and then we see if we could drive that further, and uh, and we keep going until we, uh, we can't do do so anymore, and then we bring the next symbol in, in into focus, and then we want to, uh, and when we're deciding between those all the symbols and focus, which ones to derive next, we always look at the rightmost one first. That's where the rightmost uh, term comes from. So as I do that, you will see at the end that I do not end up with the start symbol that I wanted, which is just exp. I get exp times exp plus exp. We'll talk about that in a minute. And I also do the same for the sentence, uh, sentence and I continue on with that. And I also end up with a invalid uh, sentence, which is what we expected. So what happened here? Uh, the first sentence did not work for some reason, and the second one did also also did not work, which was what we expected. But what happened with the first sentence? Well, that means that we did something wrong with the grammar. The grammar that I defined was not very well defined. You have to be careful if you have to make a grammar yourself, which you may have to do in a, a class. You have to be careful uh, to check that it is a valid grammar, that there are no mistakes that can occur like this, and poorly written grammars can all lead to serious computer errors uh, that program programmers see every day. And I won't discuss exactly how you should make your grammar. Uh, that would be a little too broad. So let's try that again. I have a new grammar here for you. That's not exactly the same as what we had before, uh, but for our case it'll be good enough. So let's try again. Now we're using top down again, and I'm just going to do the first sentence. EXP can only lead to A plus A. And now we look at the leftmost uh, symbol, which we can drive to A times A. 
but then we look at the leftmost symbol again which we can drive to digit which we can then drive to one and then we look at the next symbol which is a again which we can drive to digit which we can drive to zero and then you continue and you get to the final sentence which is exactly what we want and now if we if, let's try a bottom up parsing using that uh, first sentence we bring the one into focus first which we can drive into digit which we can drive into a now we cannot drive a on its own any further so we will bring in the next symbol which is zero which we can drive into digit which we can drive into a again and now we can drive a times a into a and so we do now we could bl bring in the one that's the last symbol we could uh, change that into digit which we can change into a and now we have a plus a which we can drive into exponent or uh, sorry expression and that's exactly what we want to finish at so we did that correctly now consider what a ambiguous uh, I'm going to tell you what ambiguous grammars are. I'm not going to talk about it too much uh, because, uh, but, but it's really not not too hard a concept. Uh, ambiguous means that uh, you could make two completely different parse trees, or two leftmost derivations, or two rightmost derivations, for the same sentence with the same grammar. This means that a sentence uh, could be uh, uh, syntactically correct in a uh, grammar but it may make have different meanings depending on how it was derived and the programmer doesn't want that because the computer might end up uh, having a different meaning for what you just did uh, from what you thought you did so ambiguous grammars should be avoided when possible so did we just cover everything <laughs> oh goodness no We've only covered a fr small fraction of a much larger to topic, and we probably won't discuss this t uh, 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 part topic any further. We, we used intuition to make a very informal way to solve our, the examples we had. But consider, how would a, a c computer program do this? How should a language be written uh, to work for all cases as a, a computer would solve it? What would different paths... Uh, what, what if different paths were possible along the derivation? How, how would the computer know which one to do? How would you backtrack? Would the computer be able to look ahead at a different symbol to help make decisions of which way to go? Uh, these are all uh, in, uh, best covered by a professional instructor, because th these can't get complicated and confusing. But, uh, th but what I can tell you is the more you practice with it, the easier it does become. Okay, thank you for watching.